over. And it's like, how do you have an intervention about that? It's like, dude, you can still, you can still not drink, but I mean, the game needs you, bruh. It's just not the same. Get out of here one more thing. Going so well. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, I'm glad that I stopped drinking. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, uh, Pete Decker the third put an addition on his uh, house last year, and he called it the Rudabaugh Rec Room. Special for you though. Look, uh, when that guy we woke up and borrowed the eleven dollars, he didn't borrow it. But when he right. reimbursed you, yeah, hey, you messed it up even my joke through the box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say is that when you lend him the eleven, when he pays you back on the EBT, he gives you twenty back on the EBT, right? I didn't know it was that deal. You need to go with that. You get more back, but you gotta buy food, things that look good. Oh, you know, now, you now you understand why I didn't do it. Alright, well this next guy... Good job, Everett. Right, nah. <laughs> can't save my jokes. <laughs> you can't follow Rudabaugh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. This next guy. Very funny comedian. He's my biggest, blackest friend. Oh. He's also my only black friend. Give it up for Jerry Sheely. Here's some love for your host. Here's some love for your host. Yeah. Mr. Everett Price is doing a wonderful job hosting this venue, and he is sharp, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Give him a round of applause for being so sharp. He looks as if he is looking for a job. <laughs> but I just rained outside, and I'm soaked. Hey, ladies. Get y'all in the front row. Hello. It's raining outside, and uh, I'm driving my favorite vehicle, my 1998 Lincoln Navigator, with a sunroof. <laughs> but after 15 years of wonderful service, I no longer have a sunroof. I have a water distribution center. <laughs> I love that joke. When it rains outside, it rains inside. That's why I'm wet. And uh, now my dashboard is always a light on threatening me of impending danger, like uh, low fuel, check your engine, check your suspension, stop drinking and driving, always something, <laughs> all these warnings. And, uh, but you know, it's getting old and I know one day this car is going to put me down, so I got a gallon of gas in the back seat. So when it puts me down, I'll get my gallon of gas, I'll douse the car with gas, set it on fire, and walk away in the blaze of glory. <laughs> Walk to the nearest bar and order two beers. And then I'm going to say, like a good neighbor, stay farm is there. And then my agent will show up. He said, hey man, where's the navigator? I said, sit down and have a beer. It's a long story. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I love that navigator. So, how do you guys do tonight? Everybody doing good? So I'm going with some new stuff right now. You know what? Just real talk. This young white girl. <laughs> so funny. You know, this white girl came to me today crying, hysterically upset, saying that her father and her mother are throwing her out the house again. Because she likes dating black men. Real story. I said, well, I understand your point. <laughs> Why are my parents so mean? Why can't they change? You know, what are people going to learn that it's okay to date interracially? You know, let's throw me out again. I said, girl, listen. You are, you are 60 years old. You can date me you want to. You are 60 years old. You can date me you want to. Thank you, Mr. Smalls. Love that guy. 
But her father is wealthy and he's got a lot of money. So here's the dilemma. Of course, she loves this black man, her Romeo, but <laughs> Pop's going to cut her off with the money, so update, uh, she's still, she's, she's single right now. She went back home to the money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say couples gain weight together. You know, boyfriend, girlfriend get together, they start getting bigger together as time goes on. I saw this very, very, very young couple, about 11 or 12 years old, holding hands. They look like they were, they've been together for 50 years. <laughs> Just that big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some days shit just ain't funny. <laughs> some days you can't find nothing funny about anything. And for a comedian, that's tough. Right? Um, some days things are just not funny. Like, you know, you're waiting on the mail to come. You wait on your GED results, they come in, you fail again for the third time. That ain't funny. Sorry. I like that, you know, I like the first part of y'all. Thank y'all for the first part of that. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that. Men, have you ever lived with a woman who does not cook? Yes. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'll say this again. Have you ever lived uh, with a woman who does not cook? No. Yes. No. Damn it. <laughs> Listen, young man. <laughs> if you're living with a woman and she can't cook, I'm going to say these famous words to you. Gentlemen, start your engines. Okay? It's time to get in your car and haul ass. <laughs> because if she can't cook, you're going to be a McDonald's french fry eating. A Wawa coffee drinking, <laughs> a Golden Corral alumni card holding, <laughs> Hardy's fried chicken eating, Domino's pizza ordering, bowl of cereal for dinner eating, <laughs> son of a gun. You know what I'm saying? You be walking with her holding hands, y'all dating, having a wonderful time, eating pizza at the restaurant, from the lower places, we doing things. And then your stomach starts growling. And she hauls ass. <laughs> what was that sound? That was my stomach. <laughs> That's how <laughs> afraid of the kitchen she is. So gentlemen, if you got a woman and she can't cook, leave her now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went to, you know, I went to DC recently, my wife and I. And uh, we stayed with some friends of ours because it got late and we didn't want to drive home. So they made us what's called a pallet. A pallet on the floor in the basement. Had a nice basement. Pillows and everything, very comfortable. So we land on the pallet and about 3 a.m. we feel something run across our feet. So we run upstairs and we knock on that door. We say, hey man, y'all got any pets in there or anything? And we just felt something run across our feet. He looked at his wife, and looked at us, and they said, no, we don't have any pets. I said, well, do you have any, like, rats or mice or anything running around down there? He, he looked at his wife, looked at me, and he said, uh, I saw a couple last week. <laughs> so I looked at my wife, and I looked back at them, and I heard a horn blowing. His wife opened the front door, my wife was in the car saying, come on in on that, Greg, we're going home. <laughs> I'm not saying it not. I got a minute left. Final applause for this venue and our host. Um, my last joke, I got one minute left. Um, I went to a girl's house. Okay. She was so nasty. <laughs> All right. I said, hey, girl, how you doing? Where your hood was been at? Um, I think I forgot my joke, Holly. You know, you threw me off, Holly. Oh, man. Give it up to your host, Mr. Everett, y'all. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Big for food. All right, Jerry. Uh, hey, I ain't gonna do no time for you. I just gotta tell you all this story about Stonehouse of the Night. This shit was fun. If you missed it, you missed a classic throwback. I mean, battlefield type comedy, right? But Jerry's in there. There's nothing but like thug out black folks and rednecks. All of this is in there, right? Only about six people actually really came to see the comedy. 